Welcome back to the channel, everyone. So today I thought I would talk about two different lighting setups that I've used here recently. One being a beauty style lighting setup and the other being something much more dramatic. And I wanted to show just how easy it is to transition from that beauty style to something more dramatic. And it can be as simple as sliding your key light over to the side in relation to your subject or having your subject step out from the key light, which will give us that dramatic fall off that we're looking for on one side of the face. So if this is something you're interested in, stay tuned. All right, well maybe you'll notice uh, that this is kind of a different setup for me. My goal is trying to set up something that I can basically turn key, flip on some lights, turn on the camera, and get to recording some of these videos to make my life easier. Uh, and with the hopes that I'll record more of these videos <laughs> because it's easier to do. Before I was set up on my psych wall where you saw me in the intro of this video. And so I was having to set everything up then break it all down uh, between shoots and recording these videos. So. Uh, now that I'm not doing all the shipping and receiving for the ProLite mods out of here, I've got a little bit more space. And so I'm trying to set up something dedicated where I can shoot. So just a little house cleaning for the beginning of this video, but let's jump into it. We're going to take a look at these two different lighting setups and ladies first. So we're going to jump in and uh, look at this beauty kind of setup that I use for I think the last three women's teams that I had here in the studio, and that was like the women's soccer, uh, one of the cheer teams, and uh, women's volleyball. So uh, you'll see I've, I've changed the turf out, obviously, for the, I put the turf in for the soccer team. And you'll see the lighting set up here. We'll walk through the lighting setup, and then we'll go through some examples. And I'll build the exposure for you and show you all that right here. All right, let me hit record. And here we go. And so you can see I'm using three lights in front of my subject to create this beauty style lighting. The first one being the Manny Ortiz Beauty Dish, which is 36 inches, which gives me some good coverage, uh, probably down almost to the waist level using something of that size. And I've got them set in this configuration. It's kind of a triangle-ish configuration. I'm about to move this one over just because things were moved around in between shoots and it's not all set exactly where I had it during the shoot. Uh, optimally, it would be a perfect triangle. And the most important part, back here. So the most important part is the position of my main or key light there being centered up on the face of my subject, which gives us even coverage on their face. And then I've got these two umbrellas that will give us that fill. So it's somewhat similar to like a clamshell beauty style lighting, uh, just a, a different version. I'm using this type of setup uh, in this type of scenario because I've got to capture full body uh, shots from the, their feet to their heads. And then I've, I've got to have the option to also come in kind of waist level. And then if I want to even tighter than that, and this lighting setup gives me those options. Uh, and that kind of goes into why I'm using the umbrellas which are the 43 inch uh, Westcott umbrellas. And that's because I do have to capture full body. And this gives me uh, coverage that I need. Uh, so if I was just doing some waist up style portraits, I could make these or I could use smaller modifiers here and I could raise them up uh, because I'm only worried about stuff that's waist up. But as I mentioned in this type of setup, I've got to get coverage uh, from head to, to toe. And you can kind of see where I'm talking about the the triangle kind of set up here. Uh, and then on the back side of this, let me get here. I've got uh, four of my Einstein lights I've had forever uh, dialed into the psych wall. And that's given me uh, the white backdrop that you'll see in these examples that I will show here in just a second. And so I've had these lights uh, forever. They still do a great job, and as long as they're uh, still working, I plan on uh, using them. So this is a good good look, uh, look at uh, this setup, and my boom light probably would be a little bit over, uh, you know, and when I was doing this, this setup. So let's jump over and look at some actual photos from the uh, setup. Uh, unfortunately, my model here... <laughs> 
smiling. I think she closed her eyes a little bit for this, but this is the key light. We're going to run through the uh, the buildup of the lighting here. So this is my key light. You can kind of you can see that I've got really even coverage on her face. She's turned her face a little bit there, but you can see what I'm doing here and it'll make more sense when we go into the more dramatic lighting setup. But let's show with the uh, fill light. So this is with the, uh, the umbrellas and uh, that key light centered up. So you can kind of just see what, what we're getting. And then with the back lights uh, hitting the backdrop, this is what uh, everything when it comes together, this is what it looks like here. And then let's just do another example. So you can kind of see I'm getting uh, full body coverage with this lighting set up. And also, let me show another one here. So an another neat thing, which I kind of like, are the catch lights. So you can kind of see all three lights in the catch lights here. And just kind of what this setup is doing for our models. It really is very flattering. And that's kind of what I like to do for some of these uh, women's sports teams. And this is not always the case. Sometimes I'll go into uh, using some of the dramatic stuff, but uh, it, it's really kind of based off of what we discussed prior to the shoots and what they're looking to have for the season. And it's, as you'll see when we jump into the dramatic stuff, it's really easy to kind of change this lighting really quickly if we want to catch some more dramatic style uh, shots. But I also am <laughs> am fully aware having done this for years and years that when i'm working with the female the, the girls teams they just love doing these group shots and this lighting setup gives me the option to do group stuff uh, with the, the players so you kind of see it gives me coverage for these style groups without having to change anything and that's kind of where we can keep things flowing during this type of uh, shoot and as i mentioned uh from the beginning there i, I uh, had I guess a cheer team that I use this lighting with and the the women's soccer team so it's something that's uh, easily uh, applied to multiple sports uh, when you're having to do the, the same things and getting uh, the full body coverage as well as you know giving these players some light that really uh, makes them uh, look fantastic so now let me reset and we will jump into uh, the more dramatic setup that I use for a men's soccer team right in here. All right, so let's take a look now at this second lighting setup that I use for the men's soccer team. And instantly you can see some things have changed. I've got only one fill over here, and I've got my boomed beauty dish, which is moved slightly to the left over here to this side. And then I've added a edge light, which I was not using any edge or rim lights with the female teams earlier, the girls teams. And so let me turn this on, we'll walk forward and you'll kind of see what I'm talking about here. Uh, same modifier though, cause I'm doing the same thing. I'm getting uh, full body shots and uh, as well as some tight stuff. And this does the same thing for me as I showed earlier. So you can see there's no fill on this side. So what I did too with this fill light is I put it on the same side as my key or main light. And so this is not going to fill in any of the shadowing on the other side of my subject. So everything is coming from one side, which is fairly important uh, if you wanna go, I guess for the most extreme kind of fall off on the side of your, your subject. You can move this. Sometimes uh, if you've seen some other setups, what I'll do is I'll use a seven foot umbrella and place it behind me, which kind of gives more of a general fill for my subject. But here I'm using it on the same side, which is gonna make things a little more dramatic than uh, that way, or if I had it on the other side of me. And so you can kind of see, this is where, let me go back real quick. And you can kind of see, and I think I'll show this again in the thing in the, in the video here, is, is the placement of this main light and how it is off center. It's off to the, uh, the side here, which is the side that I wanted to light on my subject. All this, you could put it on the other side. It's really just up to your taste, what you're looking to do. And then what I've done is I've countered that with the strip uh, light. So it is on the uh, opposite side of where the lighting is from the front. And so I've kind of countered that uh, to give me a nice highlight on the side of the shadow uh, side of the face, which we'll show here. Now I'm using also, I'm using these as rim lights, uh, these reflectors off the FJ 400s and their placement is much higher. I've had, had them down 
uh, I believe no, this is after uh, I set up or before I actually was raising before I raised them up I believe when I went through and filmed this so these are much higher kind of representing that that stadium type look that I'll do with a lot of my other sports um, portraits and then I'm using the Einsteins again same lighting uh, setup for the psych wall uh, and I've got another reflector on this side so and that as I mentioned it would be placed up higher uh, to give the thing you want to watch out for, and I believe I talk about it in my, my kind of edge rim light uh, video, uh, is when you're using those lights, if you have them down too low, uh, you can cut shadows from, the sh from your shoulder, your subject's shoulder across the neck, which is pretty distracting, uh, in, if you ask my opinion. So if you bring them up, you don't get the uh, shadowing uh, from the edges of your, your shoulders uh, on your subject. So let me uh, show here once again. So this is kind of where my subject would be standing. And so you can kind of see exactly kind of what I'm talking about, the placement of this light off to that side. And so if we go, let's see if we go up here. And if, you're, if we're counting lights, we got two lights in the front and we've got uh, an edge light over here. Let me go back to the very beginning. All right, so we've got one, two, three, four, five lights lighting my subject, and then I've got the lights on the backdrop. So that's kind of dependent on um, what you're trying to do with your background, whether, you're not, whether or not you need any extra lights for that. But so this is a five light setup uh, with, with the uh, girls teams. I was using a three light setup. Now let's jump into Photoshop and take a look at some of the uh, results. So instantly you can kind of see, or you can see, uh, this fall off that I'm talking about on my subject's face. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'll pop up the image from uh, the girls uh, team that I showed earlier to kind of contrast what we're doing here so you can kind of see the difference uh, of what's going on. So very pretty, pretty dramatic drop off here. I'm throwing that D word around. And you can see this, uh, this triangle right here. Uh, it's kind of like the Rembrandt style lighting like when, in the old days when they would use a window to bring this in and face the subject kind of uh, at an angle. And so you can see you're kind of looking for this triangle right here and that's what I've got. So let's look at it with the fill. So with that fill, I'm bringing in a little bit more light uh, on my subject's eyes that you, as you can see here and, and creating a nice catch light. Once again, that fill light is low because I've got to get full body coverage uh, on my subjects. And I'm, I'm kind of zoomed in here so you can kind of see that what's going on with the face. All right, so this, this I did this, unfortunately, a little bit backwards. But these are the uh, rim lights, the FJ400s with the reflectors. And that's what's giving us this right here. And so you're catching that, that little bit of a highlight right there, which I'm actually pretty good with. I, and this kind of lets me know that I might not necessarily need that, that strip box. But I used it anyway, and here it is. So it's giving me a little more of a, a little more... I guess a fuller <laughs> uh, edge light here, um, getting more coverage. It fills it in, plus I'm getting more light down my subject here, which is kind of giving a little bit of a separation, bringing them forward. So you can see just with those, uh, uh, the reflector lights, I'm not getting all that light down my subject's uh, body here. So you can kind of see you know, I'm catching this all the way down to um, basically his socks here. And then this plays in too with uh, the uniform color. This is uh, going to determine, at least in my, in my playbook, uh, how much fill that I'm going to need. These dark uniforms, I'm going to have to kick more fill into these uniforms to light them up. So you get more, you can see more detail in these uniforms. The white uniforms, like I was showing earlier, uh, gives me a little more leeway with the fill because you're obviously not needing as much light uh, to see a white uniform. And then here's what it looks like when I've got the backdrop uh, lit up uh, with those four Einsteins that are, that are aimed into the background. So you can kind of see, this is where we start that key, the key, the fill, the uh, rim uh, lights, the reflectors, and then the edge light here. And then everything coming together uh, gives us this nice, nicely lit image. And you can kind of see, I actually had him come back on to record this or to get these uh, images and he had already taken his cleats off. So uh, that's why he's wearing his socks. But uh, another uh, another thing I wanted to point out too, when you're using this light lighting setup, 
to have your, your, your models turn different angles and you can catch you know, different lighting on their faces. So he's got his body, his torso turned one way and then looking over the other shoulder. And so I'm still working this drop off here, but the, uh, the edge is kind of coming in a little bit more and then I'm, I'm using more of my main light on more of his face in this angle. And so this is kind of the opposite here where I've got his body turned the other way and then looking back this way where he's looking kind of into the light, but then I've got this nice shadowing on this side of the face. So it's always nice to direct your subjects in front of this type of lighting and you can get different types of looks. Uh, I wanted to show another player uh, and you can kind of see exactly the same thing is going on. We don't have any hair uh, up here to, to, you know, so we can see exactly what the lighting is doing. Uh, and so that's the same type of thing where I've got him angled and looking at camera. So just by that natural angle, we're getting a little more lighting here, but you still, we've got this nice shadowing coming down his cheek and, and the edge of his chin and stuff like that. So it's, it's that kind of a nice structural, these guys that have the nice facial structure, this lighting will definitely enhance that. Uh, same, you know, same but opposite. He's rotated the other way, so we're getting more shadow on this side of the face. Uh, and whereas it's not quite as contrasty uh, that other way. And then one more where he's looking off in that same direction. So I just feel like that's another key that I wanted to point out is when you put your subjects in front of this type of lighting, it's nice to have them look around or look in different, different uh, to look in different directions. So you can kind of play with that lighting on their faces and get some really nice results uh, just by uh, having them move themselves. And if you want to make it even more dramatic, you could have them step. In this case, he could step a little bit more uh, in this direction and there would be even more fall off. Or if you wanted to uh, make it not quite as dramatic, then they would step the other way closer to your main light. A lot of different things you can do on the fly uh, when you have this type of lighting set up. So I'm hoping that uh, this was informative for y'all. Just I want to do, hopefully I didn't go too long. Look at my timer over here. I uh, try, try to make these videos a little bit shorter, but I wanted to run through two different lighting setups, uh, show y'all just kind of the differences with those where you, know, you can go from a beauty setup uh, to something more dramatic. And as I mentioned from the beginning, you can just move. So if you've got that beauty type setup, you could, and you want to get something a little more dramatic, you can just move that light uh, to one side or the other, or you have your subject move uh, to one side or the other. So if you uh, feel like this video is beneficial and you might have learned something, please give me that thumbs up for more videos just like this. Uh, hit that subscribe button down there and the little bell next to it so uh, YouTube will let you know when I'm back on here in this fancy setup that I'm going to be uh, continually. It's obviously a work in progress. So also in the meantime, you can find me on social media at Quants Photo on Instagram and X now, uh, as well as ProLight Mods on Instagram. Y'all stay safe and healthy out there, and I will be here again soon.